Thank you very much. It is great to be with so many dear friends. Kelly Shackelford is a true warrior for liberty. And I've been honored to fight along his side many, many times. And I look forward to decades more of fighting with Kelly and fighting with each of you to defend our liberty. We live in a time of miracles. We're standing here right now with 3,000 Christian conservatives gathered in Washington, D.C. I'm told the Department of Homeland Security put out a terrorist alert. And you know what? They have reason to be worried. In 1776, I see some of my friends from there, then right now, 56 men pledged their lives, fortunes, and sacred honors to defend the inalienable rights each and every one of us was endowed by our creators. Patriots standing for liberty changed the world. In 1980, a great many of the men and women in this room stood up against a far-left president who believed in government control of the economy and refused to stand and defend American exceptionalism. And we were part of the Reagan revolution retaking our nation. What I'm here today to tell you is we're seeing that all over again. All over this nation, we are seeing a great awakening. The American people are rising up, and together, we are going to retake our nation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Barack Obama is the most radical president this nation has ever had. He is a true believer, and what he believes in is government, government control of the economy and our lives. You know, just a month ago, when tragically, the credit of the United States was downgraded for the first time in our nation's history, President Obama had the audacity to blame that on the Tea Party. You know, that's a little bit like Charlie Sheen blaming it on the Betty Ford Clinic. It's fundamentally misunderstanding the source of the problem. In 1980, it took Jimmy Carter to give us Ronald Reagan. And I am convinced the most long-lasting legacy of President Barack Obama is going to be a new generation of leaders standing up to fight for liberty and to fight for the Constitution. <laughs> now, how do we retake our nation? I'm going to suggest to you three very simple things to retake the United States of America. Number one, stand for principle. A big part of the reason Barack Obama got elected is because Republicans had lost their way. Republicans weren't standing for much of anything. I don't know a conservative in this country who going in to vote in 2006 or 2008 didn't hold his nose and vote for the lesser of two evils. So how do we retake our, our country? We go back and we fix what we did wrong before. We stand for principle. Now, I had the honor of serving as the Solicitor General of Texas, the chief lawyer for the state of Texas in front of the US Supreme Court and all the state and federal appellate courts. During the five and a half years I was in office, over and over again, Texas stood up and fought 
to defend conservative principles. And we won on a national level. <laughs> Working with Kelly Shackelford, we defended the Ten Commandments monument on the state capitol grounds. We took it to the U.S. Supreme Court, and we won 5-4. When a federal court of appeals in California struck down the Pledge of Allegiance because it includes the words, one nation under God, we brought together all 50 states, we went to the U.S. Supreme Court, and we won unanimously. Here in the District of Columbia, we brought together 31 states. We went to the U.S. Supreme Court and stood up to defend the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. And we won 5-4. We brought together a coalition of states before the U.S. Supreme Court defending the federal Partial Birth Abortion Act that criminalizes that horrific practice. And we won 5-4. We're seeing religious liberty and conservative values under assault throughout the country. One of the areas that is most under assault is the rights of conscience. You're seeing Christians that are being told they must participate in abortions despite the teachings from God. And their rights of conscience and individual liberty are being set aside. With the gay rights agenda, you're seeing more and more litigation of individual Christians told they have to participate and sanction gay marriage even though their religious teachings teach otherwise. We've got to stand up together and defend religious liberty. Yeah. One of the cases I've been most honored to litigate with Kelly Shackelford is a case where together we represent over three million veterans defending the constitutionality of the Mojave Desert Veterans Memorial in California. Yeah. We went to the U.S. Supreme Court and we won 5-4. Yeah. And I'll tell you, the biggest fight of my time as Solicitor General was a case called Medellin versus Texas. Medellin began with a really horrific crime where two teenage girls were tragically gang raped and murdered in Houston. The case took a very, very strange turn because the World Court, the judicial arm of the United Nations, issued an order to the United States to reopen the convictions of 51 murderers across this country. It's the first time in the history of our nation a foreign court has tried to bind the U.S. justice system. Texas stood up and we fought the world court. I had the honor of arguing this case twice in front of the U.S. Supreme Court. On the other side were 90 foreign nations and tragically was the President of the United States. The President signed an order attempting to order the state courts to obey the world court. So Texas stood up, we fought the world court, we fought the United Nations, we fought 90 foreign nations, and we fought the President of the United States. We defended U.S. sovereignty, and we won 6-3. So the first thing we need to do is stand for liberty, stand for principle. The second thing we need to do is stand for liberty. This administration has presided over a government takeover of our economy at a level that has never before been seen. And the truth of the matter is when the government takes over the economy, when the government gets between you and your doctor gets between you and your job gets between you and your everyday life, what is lost is liberty and opportunity. The United States has enjoyed the greatest prosperity in the history of the world because free enterprise works. 
government planners, when they're picking winners and losers, when they're handing out money, the most incredible thing about Solyndra is how utterly predictable it was. It's not government's job to be handing out a half billion here and a half billion there. We need to stand for liberty, and there is nothing more important the next United States Senate can do than repeal every syllable of every word of Obamacare. The third thing we need to do, stand for America. Amen. The foundations of our nation are being threatened. You know, in my life, like in all of our lives, my family background influences me a great deal. My dad is from Cuba. He was born in Cuba. He grew up in Cuba. When he was 17 years old, he was thrown in prison and tortured, beaten almost to death as a teenager. My father fled Cuba and came to the United States when he was 18. He didn't speak a word of English. He landed in Austin, Texas with no possessions other than he had $100 sewn into his underwear that my grandmother put there. He doesn't carry money in his underwear anymore. <laughs> he got a job as a dishwasher, making 50 cents an hour. And he worked seven days a week, and he paid his way through the University of Texas washing dishes. Now, when I was a kid, my dad used to say to me all the time, when we faced oppression in Cuba, I had a place to flee to. If we lose our liberty here, where do we go? And you know what? That question underscores why every one of us is here today standing up to fight for our liberty. My father is now a pastor north of Dallas. On April 15, 2009, he spoke at the Dallas Tea Party. And he spoke about how, he said, when I was a young man, I saw a young charismatic leader come to power. And he promised hope and change. <laughs> and he promised to redistribute the wealth. And my father then described the incredible devastation and loss of liberty and lives that occurred under Castro in Cuba. Now, what happened subsequently is a journalist posted this in Texas and said, well, this is a bit overstated. To compare Barack Obama to Fidel Castro, that seems extreme. And a bunch of liberal commentators began going on and just hyperventilating about it. <laughs> and I did something I never have done before. I signed up using my own name on the comments. And I said, all of you seem to be hysterical about my dad's speech. I just want to point out one thing. If you go and look at what my father said, he never once mentioned the words Barack Obama. He simply described what Fidel Castro did. Now, what does it say about you that you hear what Castro did and you think immediately that must be Barack Obama? <laughs> I'd like to close by asking each of you a few questions with apologies to our current president. Can we retake the U.S. Senate? Yes, we can. Can we retire Harry Reid? Can we repeal Obamacare? And can we defeat President Barack Obama? That, my friends, that, my friends, is change we can believe in. Thank you very much. God bless you.